There we go. Uh, this morning we have Megan Fights from Art Possible Ohio, and we have Pam Whiteley and Brandon Muck at Art and Clay as well. Um, and Megan is going to tell us about Accessible Expressions Ohio, and then and then Pam and Brandon might fill us in on the display that's downtown at Art and Clay. So Megan, go ahead. I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Rachel, and thank you for having me. So my name is, uh, as Rachel said, Megan Fites, and I'm the Director of Programs for Art Possible Ohio, which is the statewide service organization for art and disability. Sorry if you hear bangs in the background, it is my three-year-old son. Um, and what Art Possible Ohio does is we advocate for artists with disabilities across the great state of Ohio. And we also offer professional development workshops for cultural organizations and nonprofits that want to make their spaces and programs more accessible. Um, and we do really cool programming for the public. Um, a few things that we do is we offer workshops to artists and anybody interested um, in learning on how to become a better artist. Um, we offer um, trainings on how to make your marketing and programs more accessible. Um, and then we offer uh, really neat things like our Real Abilities Film Festival, which is a film festival dedicated to normalizing disability in the film industry that kind of runs all year long. Um, and we have uh, an, a statewide uh, exhibition called Accessible Expressions Ohio, which is what we're talking about today. Accessible Expressions Ohio is a um, exhibition featuring only artists from Ohio, artists with disabilities, and it features about, this year's exhibition features about 43 artworks um, from artists all over the state. Brandon is one of those art, those artists today. He won actually second place in our emerging category this year, and his artwork is right over his shoulder there, I'm sure. Um, Pam can point to it in a minute. Um, the exhibition um, typically opens in the spring um, and then it travels all over the state. And we're so excited that Art and Clay is hosting a portion of the exhibit this year. Um, so if you have time, today is actually the last day. It'll be at Art and Clay. Um, you can run on over. All of the artwork is, most of the artwork is for sale and you just purchase it directly from Art Possible Ohio. Um, but even if you're not interested in purchasing art, it's just a really wonderful, diverse um, exhibit um, featuring wonderful artists, really creative pieces, um, and I hope you have time to check it out. Sorry about that noise. I will also drop our website into the chat here if you want to see artwork um, closer up or you want to see some of the other artwork that is part of the full exhibition. We actually have art hanging um, uh, in a school, Columbus Academy in, in Gahanna, Ohio as well. So um, from there, I'll, I'll turn it over to Pam and Brandon. But again, I want to thank you. And I'm happy to answer any questions anybody might have about what we do as the organization or about the exhibition itself um, when we get to that point. So thanks again, Rachel, for having me today. OK, Brand Hello. We're, we're supposed to talk. All right. Um, so yeah, maybe we could tell um, people, how long have you been participating in it will it was VSA before and now it's our possible Ohio this show. Okay. Do you know how many years? I think three or four. About five, maybe. Maybe. It's been several years. I would say maybe five years. We'll say that. Um, cool. So um, what else do you want to talk about? The piece that you submitted? That'd be the farm piece. Mm -hmm. I am I love doing a take a story, doing stories of what I love to do. <laughs> And it tells of how people can plant and uh, it's a little bit of wood burning, a little watercolor into it. And it has a lot of landscapes. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> and it's one of the full piece with wood burning or pyography. <laughs> people planting. It's really cool. It's a nice shot at the back of my. Um, yeah, so cool. Um, yeah, we at Art and Clay um, have been participating in Art Possible or the Accessible Expression Show for the past since I've been here, which is the last nine years. Um, I know that before I came, they had participated in a couple of years before that. How long has the show been going, Megan? Do you remember? Um, I think at least 
uh, it's since the nineties. So, you know, we're going on yeah. almost two decades, I believe, maybe even a little bit longer. And it's just been interesting how the show has evolved too, I think over the last, um, at least the nine years that I've, we've been participating when, um, I was the director of, um, Blue Shoe Arts, which is now just an artist residency um, that Brandon still participates in, but um, we had several artists that would participate every year. Um, the show would travel, and there would always be an opening that everybody would go to. Um, to, and I, this year, you probably already said this: the opening would have been over. At, it started at Dayton uh, the Museum of Dayton, right? But uh, Springfield Museum of Art. Yeah. Thank you. Correct. Mm -hmm. In Dayton, Ohio. There we go. <laughs> In Springfield, probably. In Springfield. And we call it Springfield Dayton area. So you're not off. Thank you. You're All right, cool. Good save. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's been probably one of the coolest uh, evolutionary parts of this show is because it was always at the Westervale Community Center, um, which was just kind of like a busy space. It was a community center, which was nice because there was a lot of people that could come through to it. Um, but I feel like the, the professionalism uh, has gone up a notch too now. Um, that we've moved it on the opening to an, a, a new venue. Hmm. So yeah, um, what else should we talk about? This is a really fast virtual community, <laughs> eight minutes long. <laughs> well, you should know that um, we do this every year. So actually our call for art for the 20, uh, 2022 exhibition is open. Um, so if anybody um, on this call has friends who, or family, or you yourself are an artist who would be interested in entering. Um, I will put the call for art in our chat right now. And um, or Pam can help you figure out info if you can't find that again, because she's on our board of directors. Um, we accept artwork um, in youth categories. So anywhere from, you know, any age up to 18 emerging categories which is, um, you know, an artist kind of like still getting their feet wet, not feeling, you know, super, you know, they're still learning. They haven't been in a lot of exhibitions. And then a professional category, which is artists who have maybe sold some art pieces, have been doing this for a long time, have been in several other exhibitions. Um, you self-categorize. We don't check credentials or anything like that. And the only other requirement is that the um, artists have a disability. You don't have to self-identify or anything like that. You don't have to disclose your disability is what I mean by that. Um, there are some size requirements and that's in the guidelines. Um, and we've always typically accepted 2D art. So, you know, acrylics, photography, collage, mixed media. Um, we do also select 3D art. So we've had some masks and plenty of ceramics in the past. And then this year we're accepting wearable art for the first time. We can't accept clothing because we don't quite have um, you know, we would need mannequins and models for that. And we can't do that as we travel. We can't guarantee that. Um, but we're accepting jewelry and scarves and kind of anything smaller um, and wearable this year. So that's a pretty exciting um, development this year. We also um, award artists for each category. So the youth, emerging, and professional artists all have first and second, third place. Like I said, Brandon um, won second place this year in his category, and he's won in previous years as well. He's a very talented artist. Um, and then we'll have a special award for the wearable category this year. Um, this year, the exhibition is also opening, oops, crash, up at the Springfield Museum of Art. Um, and so we're really excited to partner with them again um, to really elevate this exhibition. We do what we can to um, get the artwork out in traditional and non-traditional art galleries and museums. Um, because we think that, you know, museums um, are still a little bit behind or very far behind in representing artists with disabilities and we're trying to change that narrative. Um, and so um, this year the show is also at the Maslin Museum, which is near Canton, Ohio. It's in Maslin, Ohio, which is about a town about the size of Lancaster um, in Northeast Ohio. It was at um, a gallery um, near Lake Erie and Huron. Um, it is going to a uh, paper circle gallery, which you may be familiar with. It's in Nelsonville, not too far from you all compared to Columbus anyway. Um, and then, like I said, um, it was in a school, it's in a private academy here where they're doing like special programming in the school. So, um, we try to get it around the state as much as possible every year. And that just really depends on who applies to exhibit it. Are you still looking for um, locations for next year too? 
We will be looking for, but at this point we're booked for the, you know, for 21, but we will yeah. be looking for locations, locations for 22. Yeah. So if Art and Play wants to host again, we could even book that now. Um, or if there's other spaces in, in your county, we would love to, to get it out there. And we, we, we will hang it anywhere. We will hang it in lobbies. We will hang it in doctor's offices. Um, it's anywhere where there are people so they can see and enjoy the art. What do you think, Megan, is the next step for Accessible Expressions Ohio um, in their evolution of the show? We are going to make it a goal um, to always open the show in a museum setting if we can. And so um, last year was the first time we ever did that at Springfield Museum of Art, which is a beautiful institution if you can ever make it there. And we'll be doing that again. We already have a museum booked for 2023. I won't reveal who that is at this point. Um, and then however we can uh, travel that opening around the state. Um, we think by doing that, that'll really like, um, you know, kick up the reputation of the exhibit and hopefully open up other galleries and professional spaces to hosting the exhibition. Um, one of the things that we do when we, um, we, insert that exhibition into that museum setting is we do a, a pretty intense professional development training with the staff, talking to them about their, their collections or the exhibits that they host and the artists they work with um, and do some, um, some training on how to better represent artists and the works that they show and make their spaces more inviting. Um, and I can tell you that with the Springfield Museum of Art, we've already seen like pretty incredible changes in what they're pushing out there, how they're talking about artists, um, how they are uh, representing artists in their galleries. And so I think um, developing those kind of relationships is essential for kind of changing um, the climates or the cultures of those spaces. And so it's a pretty cool, you know, it's a slow evolution, accessibility is. <laughs> um, but I think that we will see some you know, I'm hopeful we'll see some change in those institutions themselves and the influence they have over other similar institutions. Awesome. Yeah. Rachel, does anyone else? else do yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions for Megan or maybe Brandon? He looks like he wants to talk. Maybe. I'm good. <laughs> You're good. Um, do you would you like to show us some of the other um, the other pieces that are behind you from other people? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm gonna flip your screen on Pam on your phone if you want to show us. Well, wait a minute, let me do it. Okay. Just since um, the display ends today and. And we're kind of late on that. Maybe we could see just in case we can't get down there. Okay. Let me know if anything changes. Um, I got you. You're good. Cool. This artist is from Columbus, Ohio. Let's see if you can maybe get a range of the, where they come from the state. This one's from Columbus, Ohio as well as photography. this place. Um, Athens, Ohio. This one is large and I don't think you can see it at one time. This is a, it's like a mixed media painting. Lots of energy. Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Norwalk, Ohio. Some more photography. You can see it, the glare is kind of brown. That's Talmadge, Ohio. Oh, yep, that one's real hard to see. You'll just have to come here. We'll see you soon. I can see it pretty well. Okay. Um, this piece is sold. This artist is from Columbus, Ohio. Cincinnati. Rocky River, Ohio. 
Does anybody know what that is? That's a Cleveland suburb. There we go. Mm -hmm. This is a really prominent piece. When you come in the gallery, you can see this from right away. Columbus, Ohio. Mm. Piper Pike, Ohio. I, that might be my favorite piece. I mean, sorry, Brandon. I do like yours too, but Lancaster. It's collage. And that's Norton, Ohio. Let me run over to this other section. There's more keys. And then there's this piece, which is very conceptual. If you sit here and look at it for a while, which I have, there's just so many things that I think about. This is from Columbus, Ohio as well. Thanks, Pam. And like I said, if you wanna see the rest of the works, you can go to um, the link that I popped in the chat. Um, because there is a portion of the show elsewhere at this time. Okay. Well, if anyone has any questions, now's your time. No. <laughs> Megan, don't worry. This is normal. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. It definitely is. I'm not worried. <laughs> okay, well, if no one has any other questions, um, Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to um, hurry up and get this link on um, on Facebook so people could see as well, and then we'll get it on our YouTube channel. And Brandon and Pam, thank you so much thank for you. taking time out of your busy day to show us the rest of that artwork. So um, I want to just give a quick recap. Uh, well, I guess a preview, not a recap of what's coming up in October on Virtual Community. So the first week we have Steffi's house. We have United Way again. They're gonna to talk to us about their 5K run that's coming up in November um, and also their campaign. Um, the Lighthouse will be in October as well as the Common Pleas Court Reentry Program. So that's a lot of very different things coming up for October. So we hope you all will join us then and we'll see you then. Thank you so much, have a good day. Thank you.